Today's video is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Hey, brother! Guys, today we are diving into a very odd, muddy, and viscous section of the wizarding world. Polyjuice Potion. This is one of the most constant and active plot devices in play across the entire series and into Fantastic Beasts. It drives Ben crazy. And while they seem to cover a lot of ground with their transformations, there are still a lot of unanswered questions. Like, what if a child drank the potion which had the hair of an adult in it? Would they age up into an adult or would they turn into a child version of that person? What if that person was an animagus? Could you also transform while transformed? Or what if you polyjuiced into Tonks? Would her metamorph magi abilities be in play? Or or would you just discover that she's almost always transformed, but you would only transform into like the most base version of her and you'd be like, I don't even recognize you. Oh my gosh, guys, what does the real Tonks even look like? But then of course, there's the most important question about polyjuice potion, which is what kind of juice are they drinking in the wizarding world? I mean, they describe polyjuice almost as if it has the same consistency as mud, but then like, what's pumpkin juice like? Is it more like pumpkin sludge? Ugh. Ugh. Also, now that I'm saying it out loud, I'm completely unsure whether or not pumpkin juice is one of those wizard things or just like a British thing. Is anyone out there actually drinking pumpkin juice? Nay, sludge? Sludge juice. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, it's just a matter of viscosity. <laughs> Isn't it always? Anyway, as you can tell, we have a lot of ground to cover today as we get to the bottom of just how exactly polyjuice potion works. Before we dive on in, we need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. All right, imagine you're brewing up a nice cauldron's worth of poly sludge in the bathroom. You wouldn't want just anyone popping in and asking what you were doing, right? I mean, that's probably true for most bathroom situations, but poly sludge specifically. Either way, you don't want to be disturbed. You would shut and lock the door or else use a bathroom haunted by an emotionally unstable ghost for maximum security. So let me ask you this. Why would you go online without taking the exact same measures? Because if you're Browsing the internet without ExpressVPN, that's exactly what you're doing. I had to work for it, but I'm calling that a solid analogy. Here's the thing, guys. Your ISP knows every single website you visit, and they can sell that information to ad companies to use your data to target you. But ExpressVPN puts a stop to this. It creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so that nobody can see anything you're doing. And I personally use ExpressVPN on all of my devices because it works on all of my devices, the phones, tablets, desktops, even routers. Plus it is insanely easy to use. You open the app, press one button and boom. Secure. So if you're like me and believe that your online activity is your business, then head over to expressvpn.com slash SCB. That's gonna get you three months free. Again, that is expressvpn.com slash SCB, expressvpn.com slash SCB, three months free. Link is in the description down below. Polyjuice Potion is first introduced to us in Chamber of Secrets when Harry, Ron, and Hermione are secretly brewing some so that they can transform into Crab and Goyle and Millicent Bolstrode and trick Malfoy into confessing that he is indeed the heir of Slytherin. How thick can you get? what they're saying about the pumpkin sludge. But since that point, it has been running rampant throughout the story. I mean, it is the source of the big reveal plot twist at the end of Goblet of Fire. It is the source of all the trickery at the Battle of the Seven Potters. Harry, Ron, and Hermione also use it to break into both Gringotts and the Ministry. Malfoy uses it to have Crab and Goyle stand guard for him as little girls. And even Newt takes a swallow to gain entry into the French Ministry of Magic. Worst plan ever, by the way. I mean, he is immediately found out by the person he is impersonating and it's gonna wear off anyway and then you're just gonna look like you inside of a place where you're already a wanted man. So I don't know what you were thinking here, Newt. Point is, they use it a lot. That wasn't even all the examples, but bonus points if you can list the ones I left out in the comments. But the thing about Polyjuice Potion is it feels straightforward. Like, drink potion, turn into other person. That's it. Right? And yet there are just a lot of extremely weird and sometimes quite dark things to consider about this potion. We know, for example, that you need a bit of the person you're going to change into. And in the books, they normally just use hair, but it could be anything. You could use nails or dandruff or worse. Like I have to imagine blood would be 
pretty effective. I mean, at least that's how it works in the name of the wind with the laws of sympathy, which states that the more similar two things are, the more powerful the sympathetic link, which I only bring up to remind you that name of the wind theories are coming in a couple of weeks, so you should read the name of the wind. But the idea that you need hair or nails or skin or blood conjures up in our muggle brains the idea that it must be DNA related in terms of how the polyjuice potion works. After all, these are always the most effective things a detective might collect at a crime scene to test your DNA to see if you've done it. Which at face value seems great, but then there are parts of the transformation that don't seem like they have to do with DNA at all. For example, when Barty Crouch Jr. is transforming into Moody in Goblet of Fire, he also loses his leg and eye, just like the real Moody. But obviously, Moody's DNA didn't literally change when he lost those body parts, right? Like, your hair can't tell that you're missing a limb, right? Right? What do you know? Watch and learn, people. Actually, it feels like it's too far. We're getting there. Mm-hmm. Almost, almost, almost better. I'm gonna roll. But whether or not your hair knows that you lost a limb, this is obviously part of how Polyjuice Potion works. In fact, it even seems to extend beyond just missing body parts. For example, when everyone transforms into Harry at the beginning of Deathly Hallows, Ron says, I knew Ginny was lying about that tattoo. I knew Ginny was lying about that tattoo. Now I think Ron is just joking here. He doesn't actually think Harry ever had the tattoo, but the joke is only funny if the tattoo would have been there when they transform. So either Ron has just no comedic time which is just not true. I mean, have you seen the lad eat some chicken wings? Or that wizards expect tattoos to be part of the transformation, which again is obviously not genetic or related to your DNA. Harry's scar also transfers to everyone, so maybe it's not genetic at all. It's just some sort of physical appearance-based copy you get by drinking the potion. Which sounds great, except Hermione then also says, Harry, wow, you really do have very bad vision. Harry. Your eyesight really is awful. Which means his eyesight also actually transfers, and that's not just a cosmetic change. Okay, so here's what I think is happening. We know the ability to be magical at all is passed down genetically. And just based on how the potion works, it seems like whatever gene is carrying the magic is also keeping track of your present physical appearance as well. This idea also ties in pretty well with all the ingredients that go into making the potion. Each of these was carefully chosen and represent the idea of two identities coming together. To make Polyjuice Potion, first you'll need lacewing flies, so that's lacing things together. Knot grass, so again, things being tied into a knot. You need the horn of a bicorn, so that's two horns representing duality. Obviously, you're gonna wanna throw a few leeches in there. Those represent the sucking of one identity into another. Then there's the flux because of course you are literally in flux. And last but not least is the boom slang skin. A boom slang, if you don't know, is a snake. So you're wearing the shed skin of another being over your being. And I promise I'm not just forcing any of those explanations either. They are all available over on the Pottermore archives. As is a brief but helpful explanation as to how the potion works, which states you can change age, sex, or race but not species. And that does clear up a few things, but definitely not all things. It does sound like though, if you are an adult and you drank the Polyjuice Potion of a child, you would indeed change into a child and vice versa. That's pretty straightforward, but let's get a little creative here. Let's say you're an adult and you have the hair of another adult from when they were a child. In that case, would you transform into the adult version of them? or the child version of them. Well, based on how it sounds like the potion is working, I think for sure you would turn into the child version of them. Meaning when the sample was taken is relevant, which means if Moody had access to a sample of himself from before he lost his leg and eye, he could potentially regrow his leg and eye for brief periods of time. And let's face it, you know he totally does, but I also think he's the kind of person who wouldn't do that because he's not one to dwell on the past. Come Constant vigilance. But actually that brings up a weird different point. Like, could you drink a Polyjuice potion for yourself? Actually, yes. And the more I think about it, I'm certain you would transform into the younger version of yourself, at least for the duration of the potion. And if you disagree, imagine this scenario. What if in Prisoner of Azkaban, just before they use the time turner, Harry lost a limb? Ouch. 
But then they use the time turner and go into the past and Harry steals a hair from the version of himself that still has the limb. He adds that hair to the potion and in that scenario, he would absolutely regrow the limb, right? Because that version of him still had it. And I don't see how that would be any different from just saving a sample from your younger self, except that in this case, you're stealing it instead of saving it. But I'm sure your younger self will understand. It's for your own good. But man, if you had enough polyjuice potion then and enough stores of your younger self's hair or blood or whatever, I think you could just continuously stay in the younger version of your body somewhat indefinitely. I don't know why, but something about that seems very wrong. Would that count as like a light form of immortality? I don't think so. Maybe like a somewhat infinite youth, but not really infinite, I guess. You'd still be getting older. You just look younger. This is why you gotta moisturize every day, you guys. Okay, flip side though, if we travel down a very dark road, what if you had the hair from a dead person? I agree, unethical in every single way, but would it work? Good news, I don't think so. Now, if it were just a matter of having a DNA sample, then I think that would work because your DNA continues to exist long after you're dead. But again, I do not think that's what it comes down to. Because again, like I said before, it seems much more like the potion is operating off of whatever magical gene or ID marker is inside you. And there's no indication that your magic continues to exist after you die. In fact, I would say it's just the opposite. I mean, we literally see the magical part of people move on to the afterlife. That's the part that seems like it can occasionally come back in the form of echoes or fail to move on at all and come back as a ghost. Either way, though, they can't do magic anymore and their body is dead. Interestingly, though, it would also appear that in death, any sort of curse upon your mortal body also dies. Like for example, when Harry sees Dumbledore in King's Cross, his hand is completely healed. Similarly, Sirius and Lupin both look younger and fuller and handsomer, although neither of them is really known to be cursed. Well, I guess Lupin had the werewolf bite? More on that in a minute. But the point is, if the potion is copying the magical gene in the other person and that magical gene maintains any curse laid upon that person, then it actually solves every caveat we have so far. Although as I'm saying this, I'm realizing that Harry and Hermione polyjuice into muggles when they go into Godric's Hollow and obviously they don't have a magic gene. In which case I'm starting to think it's more soul base, but that it still operates kind of the same way because muggles would still have souls. Yes, it totally still works. But so then the reason Barty Crouch would lose his leg and eye when transforming into Moody is because those injuries are from curses and can't be healed and are permanently affecting his mortal body. It would also account for everyone inheriting Harry's bad vision when they transform into him, even though that seems more genetic than aesthetic. Actually, it would also mean that Harry's bad vision is caused by the same curse that left him the scar on his forehead. And if you need further proof of that, then let's head back to King's Cross where Dumbledore and his fully healed hand are. Because guess what? Harry wakes up with both no scar and no glasses because the curses died when he did. Side note, Dumbledore does still have the crooked nose in King's Cross because that's not a magical wound. It's a regular muggle wound from when his brother punched him in the nose at their sister's funeral and Dumbledore never cured it because privately he believes he deserved it. Moving on though, still got a few more things to cover. For example, we know the Potlidge's potion doesn't allow you to change species, but what if say you polyjuiced into Lupin, would you then also transform at the full moon? Honestly, it's kind of hard to say because we just don't know enough about how werewolves work because then the question becomes like, is Lupin still the same species? Because if he's not, then you might not be able to polyjuice into him without some sort of weird half wolf human situation going on like what happened to Hermione when she turned into the cat. But, and this is just my personal opinion, I think it's more likely Lupin is the same species and the condition is more of an illness. And in that case, I think you would be okay to drink it because you are still you underneath and you are not a werewolf. Similarly, if let's say you took apologies from James or Sirius, you would not then gain the ability to transform into a stag or a dog because underneath you're still you, you just look 
like them. And the great example of this is when Harry is breaking into the ministry and Polyjuice is into Rookwood, but then has to conjure his Patronus. It's still the stag, even though he's got the body of Rookwood, it's still Harry underneath. And actually I think that remains true for an Animagus. If you took the hair of the stag or of the dog while James or Sirius was transformed and then put that in your Polyjuice potion, I think you would still just transform into their human forms because it's still just them underneath. And then there's Tonks, who is another odd one altogether because she's a metamorph magi and can change her appearance at will already. So you'd be morphing into someone who has morphing powers. And it feels like that would line up, but I do not think you would get the power. But I do think you would transform into whatever Tonks looked like at the time you took the hair because her soul would still be keeping track of her present physical appearance. So really what Tonks should have been working on was morphing her face into the appearance of other people and then having people polyjuice that version of her so they could like infiltrate stuff. Or I guess at that rate she could just do it herself because she would already look like them. Right. And she's already an aura, so yeah, you know what, that just seems safer. She talks, should have been doing a lot more. Boy, anyway, that's a lot of really weird magic science to be keeping track of, but I think we covered it all. If not, please let me know any other questions you have about Polyjuice Potion in the towel section down below. Also, big announcement, this Friday night, April 16th at 6 p.m. Eastern, we are bringing Trivia Night back right here on the main channel. Again, that is 6 p.m. Eastern this Friday night. We're gonna be doing trivia. We've got prizes with some brand new products. It's gonna be super fun, hope to see you there. Also speaking of transforming into other animals, we have got these vintage Super Carlin Brother Grizzly Eagle Shark shirts available over at supercarlinbrothers.store for one more week only. That is it, when they are gone, they're gone. At the end of the week, that's it, you can't buy them anymore, so hurry over if you wanna get one of these cool shirts. But guys, thanks as always for watching today's video. Don't forget to leave a like on it if you haven't already, and subscribe so you don't miss any future Harry Potter action from us. If you want to see how Felix Felicis works, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, until next time, I will see you in another Life Brother.